Thank you White Knights is supported by ExclusiveWellnessClub.com Home of wellness products for the health conscious such as MMS1 and 2, Lugol's Iodine, DMSO, Colloidal Silver and MSM at ExclusiveWellnessClub.com Shipping outside the United States available, link below. My name is Lisa Harrison and today for me is Tuesday the 19th of June 2012 and I'm speaking with an individual who goes by the name of Cobra. Uh, Cobra appeared on the scene via a website called 2012 Portal just in March of this year and Cobra claims to be a member of an underground resistance movement and the website 2012 Portal website acts as both a platform for making public announcements as well as coded communication with fellow resistance members. COBRA's identity is at this stage uh, private, which is why this is audio only, and his voice will be in fact modified. Mine will just sound modified because I'm sick with a cold, but this is what I sound like at the moment. So welcome COBRA. Thank you for this invitation. Uh, thank you for agreeing to it. Uh, I've been looking forward to this. Um, I don't know. I know that there is a lot you can't talk about, but as I, I'm not very clear on the guidelines, if it's okay with you, I'll just ask a bunch of questions and you answer what you can. Um, yes, we can, go, we can go this way, for sure. Okay. Now, you talked about this resistance movement, and I was wondering if you could tell me when it was created. When did this resistance movement come together? Okay, there are two phases of creation of the resistance movement. Uh, the first phase started uh, in the mid-70s uh, by a certain individual that has a code name, Michael. This is not his real name, but uh, this is his code name. And uh, she actually gathered a group of people around him, basically just to survive because he was uh, chased after by the cabal. And by running for his life, he discovered a maze of tunnels beneath the New York railway system. And uh, he created his base there. And by expanding further, he discovered that there are other beings living uh, below the surface of the earth in the underground uh, caverns. And he made contacts with those people. And so this was the formation of the group called the organization. This was the first phase of the resistance movement. But later, in the late 90s, this organization was uh, under strong attacks from the cabal, which was quite more powerful at that time, and was almost completely wiped out in 1999. So the call for help was sent to the uh, extraterrestrial positive forces, and they brought enforcements um, in the shape of many millions of uh, very skilled fighters that came from Planet X, and those fighters were teleported uh, in the upper crust of the Earth's surface, in those underground caverns, and they regrouped there. So this group actually then um, reorganized and made a plan to continue liberating this planet from the influence of the cabal. So this plan is now being uh, accelerated, as you probably already know, and we are now in the phases when we start talking about the final liberation of the planet. So these people that live below the surface, are these the ones that we would know as the Agathians? Uh, yes, this is quite connected. Uh, behind the resistance movement, there are other beings which are not actually skilled fighters, but are very spiritual, advanced people who actually hold the balance of the situation. Without them doing meditations every day, without them connecting with the source every day, this planet would be destroyed many times over. So there's actually a spiritual part of this uh, underground movement, underground civilization, and many channels and many light workers call it civilization of Arta. This is just one of the names, but uh, there are actually many very evolved beings living down under there. Interesting. Um now, I, I, if I heard you correctly, in your previous interview, you said there were 300 individuals on what you would consider the front line of this resistance and 20 million around the planet. Did I hear that right? 
Okay, I will explain. There are about 300 which are uh, on the surface of the planet, infiltrated inside the system of the bow. They're infiltrated in position in the, high in the military and especially in the alphabet agencies, intelligence agencies, uh, positions of that nature. Mm-hmm. And the rest of them, about 20 million at this point, they are not living on the surface of the planet. They are living underground and never come to the surface. They will only come to the surface of the planet if necessary. What would be what would be deemed if necessary? Um, there are actually special plans being prepared. Uh, I'm not allowed to speak about yet, but in a few days I might, and I will explain this in my book. Okay. So, these 300 and these 20 million um, are primarily made up of ETs who have come here, not, not humans. Uh, actually, they are human bodies. Like if you would uh, meet one of them in the streets, they would look uh, like everybody else. Uh, those people have incarnated on planet X, which is a planet situated in the outer range of the solar system. And uh, some of them even had some information on planet Earth. Actually, one of them I know had some information in age of planets. But uh, mostly, those people are, I would consider the same as the star seeds on planet Earth. And if we have about 5 million star seeds incarnated on planet Earth, on the surface of the planet, that took many Earth incarnations. Mm-hmm. And I would say uh, those, both, both, both those factions are quite similar in their... Uh, structure, psychology, and uh, outer look. Now you said that yourself are Palladian incarnated on Earth. Were yes, you, that's true. Were you, were you born with full memory of who you are, where you came from, and why you're here? Or did that uh, come yes, later? Most, of, most of the memory. Not, I would say not 100%, but I was always aware that I'm not coming from here and that I have a certain mission here. I never forgot that. Mm-hmm. So how important was the recent Venus transit to what's going on here at the moment? Uh, Venus transit is one of the turning points for the uh, planetary liberation because this is the day where uh, when the goddess energy finally returns completely to planet Earth and has been anchored also inside the physical matter of planet Earth. This is a very strong energy that actually brings balance and peace after more than 5,000 years of uh, constant wars and conflicts. And this energy influences everybody, including the Kabbalah. So this is the reason why they were starting to consider surrendering. They never had that idea before. They had this delusional thinking that they are omnipowerful and omnipresent and they can do everything they want and get away with it. But now they're starting to realize that might not be the case. Is this only a small faction that are considering surrender, or is this across the board? Not everybody, but many of them. And right now, as I speak, there is actually a conflict inside the cabal whether to surrender or not. So we'll see very soon in two days what happens. So, in addition to, I mean, maybe this, this, the energy that came in with the transit was sort of the tipping point, but... Were they considering surrendering prior to that? And if so, why would they? What, would they, what could possibly frighten them enough to consider it? Mm, actually, the light is getting more and more powerful day by day. Mm-hmm. And the cabal is beginning to realize that their plans are not going as they wish them to be. So the actual situation is starting to push them in this direction. That's interesting. <laughs> so at the moment we've got several people talking about uh, possible surrender and we've got this 21st, of, which is only in two days' time for me, uh, deadline. The, the problem I see at the moment is that people have been hanging on, so to speak, one deadline date after another, after another, that, that have come and gone, and we've, we've not seen any real action. Um, we're not seeing anything break through to the mass media. We're not, you know, to, to our knowledge, everybody's still in place and they're still doing what they'd always planned to do. If this date of the 21st comes and goes again, that people are just, that, that, that'll be it. That may well be the final straw because there's been so much talk of it. 
Um, do you? How do you foresee? Uh, how can I put this? How do you foresee a surrender or not breaking through? I mean, are they really, really going to come onto mass media on mainstream television and talk about what they've done and who they are? I mean, that is going to blow so many minds. Okay, first let me explain about the deadlines. This is a huge process, and each deadline is just one step in this process until the major breakthrough happens. And when the major breakthrough happens, it will be really major for everybody. And that will actually include things like uh, the cabal stepping up to the mass media and uh, seeing what they did or them being arrested or anything of that nature. So, if the 21st June comes and goes, which is possible, then the further plans will be implemented that are being prepared right now. Uh, so, I would not fix myself on any certain date. I would focus more upon the process itself. It's, from one perspective, nothing is going on and they are still in power, but if you look at the background, there are many changes happening daily. Mm. And also, uh, if there would not be any activity of the light forces, the situation would be much, much, much worse. There was a lot of talk about the war uh, between Israel and Iran a few months ago. And yes. this has been almost cancelled. There have been talk about New World Order putting everybody in the FEMA camps. This has not happened. And why this has not happened? Exactly because of the activity of the light forces. So the light is real. It is proceeding. There are no guarantees about the exact date of the breakthrough, but we are getting closer and closer. And each of those deadlines is a step further in that process. So I would say there is a certain possibility that the cabal will surrender on the 21st of June. And if they don't, which is also possible, then further plans will be implemented, and I will update people about this when it is necessary and where it, when it is appropriate on my blog. I wanted to speak about your blog because I had an amazing uh, synchronistic event. <laughs> because I had, a, I personally had a, I don't know whether you'd call it a vision or a, a download or something about three years ago, and I've not had any external confirmation or validation for it. And I've been, I've been talking about it for the last few years as the rinse and repeat cycle of incarnation. And yes. you described it perfectly on your blog today, which I just thought yes. the synchronicity of that on the day that we're due to speak was was remarkable. You and see, uh, synchronicities like this one are happening exactly for the reason that people have dogs to give them hope and uh, guidance that this is all happening. And this is all being planned from forces much greater than all of us. This is coming directly from the source. Now, when we, when we first corresponded, um, it was because of uh, information you put out about archons. And my question to you was, uh, had, you, um, had you read any of John Lamb Lash's work on the archons? And you said yes, and, there was, and that there was some truth in it. Can I get your definition of what an Archon is and where they come from. Okay, Archon is actually a being that has been subjected to very strong uh, unnatural uh, mutation process. Um, long time ago, in the galactic history, there were certain group of beings um, that were in fact very powerful angels and they wanted to experience matter. So they devised uh, very advanced technology based on electromagnetic fields that distorted space and time continuum, and they subjected themselves to this technology, and this has changed their consciousness. And this is the source of evil, as you would describe it. And those beings have been uh, very powerful angels before, and they, after this process, they became very powerful, I would say, demons. And they actually created current universe, and they ruled this place for the last 25,000 years, and now it's time for them to go. Their time is up. So based on the, on, the, on the prophecies that we have about the, the equinox and, not the equinox, the, um, the, the, pro, the, the procession, yeah, the procession of the equinoxes um, and the awakenings that happened at this time, was, 
this this little experiment of theirs was it always going to have a time frame? It was always going to have to end at this time. They had 26,000 years to, to mess around, but that was always going to be it. Yes, actually, there is a, there is a special timeline which has not been disclosed to the man yet, but that, that specific date, this ends when it's be erased, and it will be erased. It will end, one way or the other. <laughs> it's that one way or the other thing that, that gets people nervous. Um, so where, where and if do the greys, the grey ETs fit in with the Archons? Okay, the greys are just one of the many races which were subjected to genetic engineering and uh, modification of consciousness in the collective history and uh, they have been pretty active on this planet in the last, I would say, 50 years, but in the last few years this has been cleared and at this moment there are no more um, Negative, negative ET entities on this planet, except those who are incarnated in human bodies as, a cabal, as the Kabbalah. So there, is, there are no strange unlooking ETs flying around in their ships around the planet right now. Is that interdimensionally as well, in fourth or fifth or wherever? Or? Yes. Uh, uh, as I have already described many times, uh, the only place where there is any darkness is the thin surface layer of this planet. Now, on the physical plane and on those higher non-physical planes as well. And this is what I have described in my last article. This is the, the only thing left. So, the, when you say the, what, those who are incarnated as human beings in the Cabal, so it is, it is entirely possible for these Archons to manifest physically here as, oh, yes. as humans. Yes, some of them have incarnated on the physical plane, uh, especially among the Jesuits, because this is the only vibration that suits them. Um, My own research about it. A few hundred years ago, there were many more incarnated because the vibration of this planet was much lower. Mm -hmm. But as the vibration gets higher, it's hard for them to maintain the physical body. So we now have this few of them uh, on the physical plane. So there will be people listening to this who, when you say the Jesuits... Um, believe they're just a, a religious order, but um, I can explain. Ninety percent, ninety percent of Jesuits are good-hearted people, and they really believe uh, that everything is okay, and they have their connection with the source. But ten percent are not, and among those ten percent, there are a certain fraction that are extremely dangerous and extremely evil, and they have to be stopped. And they're actually the ones leading the whole organization. And not just that organization, they're actually in control, uh, to a certain extent, of the physical plane of this planet. I'm surprised to hear you say only 10%. I honestly thought it was a much greater percentage than that. And from what I understand, the Jesuits are um, a military order. They're, they're assassins masquerading um, as priests. Something like that. They were, they were actually military order hundreds of years ago, and they have evolved. And now, um, I would say they command military forces indirectly through their connections, especially uh, with uh, Rothschilds. So you have few top archons in the Jesuit faction that they, and they control the, uh, the Rothschilds, and the Rothschilds have very deep connections in the uh, industrial military complex. And with that, they control, um, through the military around the world, they control the physical plane. And, and of course, uh, through the um, Rothschild faction, also the financial system. But those few articles inside the Jesuit faction are the ones who see what's going to happen and what's not going to happen. Sorry, at the moment we've got a situation where the, the Vatican is kind of hemorrhaging whistleblowers. Um, do you think that is a genuine collapse of that? organization, or is it a manipulated one to appear? Mm -hmm. You see, what is interesting for me to observe is, always when the resistance movement clears some of those archons or does something about them, there is a scandal in the Vatican. So, this has happened a few years ago, it's happening again. So, I would say, this is the reaction of the Vatican, because the power is being cut off from those Jesuits. They, 
the young as well as our each day. And this for sure triggers a reaction of those who are uh, subordinate to those judges. And of course there, we have, there is some true leaked out and there is some reaction and also some manipulation included. But yes, there is a reaction which is a direct consequence of the Jesuit archons uh, losing their power. So can we, can we say the same thing about the financial collapse, that this is a genuine financial collapse that's out of the control of the cabal and not, and not one of their orchestrated collapses in order to bring in a one-world currency? And there are actually two sides of the story. Mm, this collapse, uh, actually I would say this way, the cabal was planning on their collapse a long time ago. Mm. And they initiated this collapse uh, with the same plan that had many times before to um, grab people's wealth and um, grab more money and get more control. But the whole collapse was, uh, there are higher forces that are leading this collapse in a way that actually will take power away from the cabal. So by triggering that they are actually doing their own way. Because a lot of forces um, in the last few months have taken a lot of control. They have much more power over the financial system. Which doesn't mean the financial system is still not in the hands of the financial system is still in the hands of the Rothschilds. But um, there is a certain computer program which uh, actually drives the whole financial system. And this uh, computer program has received a virus on the 21st of May this year. So the life forces can actually shut down the whole system just like that. They just uh, hit the switch and so on. And this is what might happen in the case uh, of the mass event scenario. If this scenario is going to be um, executed in the way it was planned, uh, the life forces can just switch off the financial system and we have a banking holiday around the world everywhere. And this for the purpose of uh, cutting the uh, away from their money. Because they still have access to that money. They have much less than they had in the past, but they still have enough to survive and run their show, as you can probably experience today. Mm. Uh, because the law needs, I would say, a few billion dollars every day to control everybody, to control the media, to control the military, to, to keep the show running. And if they get less than, let's say, one or two billion daily, they're in big trouble. So what about the Olympics coming up? There's a lot of talk about a, you know, a terrorist attack, a false flag event. Um, are you aware of any plans that they may have had for the Olympics? Mm, yes, they had plans, but don't, this is not going to happen. Like, uh, many, they had many plans for many things, and most of them did not happen. Uh, exactly because of the activity of the lot forces. Uh, what about the... I know, I know there's a lot of talk, and, you, and you've, you've mentioned it before, but... Earth changes, severe earth changes. And most of the information coming to us about earth changes that will happen are coming from off-world sources, as are the information about, you know, they'll be mitigated. Um, but there's nothing that I'm aware of really here on the ground to suggest that we are in for earth changes. Nobody's um, talking about it from a, you know... A, from studying the planet and what's, and what's going on with it. Um, it's, been, it's been said that this is just another fear paradigm um, that is being orchestrated either by the, the darker ETs or the Archons or, or the Cabal. Um, why is, if in fact Earth changes are part of this process, Why? Okay, uh, this is quite a complex story, and I'll try to explain. Um, actually, Earth changes were part uh, of what was about to happen on this planet. This was predicted a long time ago, but uh, the activity of the light forces have diminished the impact of those changes dramatically. So, actually, the positive the races have been expecting those Earth changes to happen a long time ago, and they did not because of the activity of the light forces on this planet. And there might be some Earth changes happening, but not in, not in 2012, much later than that. They might happen after a certain 
Mm-hmm. When the critical mass of humanity will awaken, and the purpose of, them, of those earth changes happening is to purify the planet. But um, day by day, the situation is brighter and brighter, so there is nothing to fear. And yes, there is scientific evidence of those things. Mm, there is a scientist by the name of Paul Violet that uh, is speaking about the activity of the galactic central sun. And uh, actually, those, those earth changes are happening cyclically. Uh, every 26,000 years, when the galactic central sun gets active, and right now we are entering the period of increased activity of the galactic central sun. But as I have said, the positive light forces can direct the energy of the galactic central sun in a balanced way, so that this process is not traumatic for humanity. So I would say there is nothing to fear. Okay. Um, I don't know whether you can answer this or not, but Drake, uh, Wilcox, Fulford, and the Postmaster General. These are all people I know you're aware of. Um, Are they all in touch with the same group you're in touch with? Uh, The only thing I can say, and I will say this, one of the contacts that Drake has has been contacted by one of the 300 agents of the resistance movement. Mm -hmm. And this is the only contact I know that has uh, a real connection with the resistance, not directly, but indirectly. Okay. Other people do not have direct access to this, but uh, they um, get input from their, their resources. And is, to your knowledge, is the Postmaster General genuine and playing a positive role in, uh, in all of this? Uh, I would say that everybody needs to have their own discernment uh, regarding to who is genuine or not. So I will not give any... Um, estimates or um, people about this. Okay. So everybody needs to use their own discernment and intuition and uh, rational mind on who is genuine and who is not. I'm more curious as to whether or not there's even any point in going down that road, I guess. Um, Um, If you know what I mean. If it's all going to come crumbling down. I didn't quite understand. So let me just say... Oh, okay. Um... Well, going through the process that the Postmaster General has, has proposed, you know, um, if it's all going to come crashing down, is there really any point in even going down that road? Well, uh, it's, I would say it's a guided crash, or not even the crash, the, the transformation. And it's right from above, so it's not like um, end of the world or anything of that nature. It's actually a transformation that will lead towards a new society. Mm-hmm. Now, you've also said that the Palladians will initiate first contact once the Cabal is removed. But what constitutes removed? It I mean, means that they have no more say in anything on this planet. Either they surrender or they are arrested, but they get out of the way, because they are blocking this every day. The top members of the Cabal are well aware of the Palladians, and other parts the Light Forces, and they are preventing this first contact day after day, year after year, and... The time has come to simply get them out of the way so that the first contact can happen. How can they prevent it, though? I mean, what's, what's stopping you guys, what's stopping the Palladians from disappearing en masse? Mm, first, uh, the Cabal is uh, holding also Navy hostage. So, for example, the Palladians could uh, make a mass landing right now, and what would this trigger? It would be um, the Cabal would simply release all its military arms and people, including um, not anymore nuclear weapons at this point, but uh, chemical weapons and all the conventional things they have, they would just create a massacre on the planet. So they first need to be stopped, and then the Palladians can appear. So they're actually holding humanity as a human shield against any action like that happening? Yes. Wow. Exactly, exactly. This is what's happening. And this has been... Uh, in place in the last, for the last 25,000 years, 26,000 years. The same, the same situation. So once they are removed, and, you, and what, what does first contact look like? Does it, does it look like mass, mass sightings, or is, it, is that going to be too mind-altering for people? It's a process. So uh, after the command is removed, the Palladians will contact few selected private individuals And then those selected private individuals will go to the mass media, present evidence, 
And then the Canadian schools start appearing more and more and more and more publicly until the point when there will be official contact made between the Canadian representatives and uh, the representatives of human population and of the uh, and those representatives of the human population will be, um, there will be people from the government and the, the type of government that will exist at that time, and also some other individuals. So there will be a small group of Earth population meeting a small group of Pleiadians, and that will be an official diplomatic contact that will be broadcast uh, uh, over the mass media around the planet. And this will be an official, um, there will be an official invitation for the Earth to be accepted inside the Galactic uh, Confederation. And this first contact, the official diplomatic first contact, will happen as a response to that invitation. And that will initialize a process of, uh, accept of the actual acceptance of the planet. That will take some time, and uh, then the Pleiadians and the other races will introduce themselves and uh, assist the humanity in this transformation. So, are you aware of Tolik? An individual that goes uh, by yes, that's okay. yes. So, much of what you say in regards to the Palladians, he has very similar things to say in regards to the Andromedans. Are they are the two groups working together? Actually, there is a whole confederation of many races uh, that are working on this project. I'm only uh, in contact with the Palladians, but not with the other races. But uh, actually, the Palladian race will be the first to appear simply because they are. Mm, they look like human beings. They are human-like beings who look like humans, and uh, their psychology is, uh, of all the races, the most similar to the human race. And other races will help, but they will not be at the forefront at the beginning. At the later stages, uh, after the first contact, other races will be introduced, and uh, when the humanity is ready to accept uh, different types of uh, beings, it will be easier that way. The Palladians actually play a starring role in the Dreamtime stories of the Australian Aboriginals. They say when you talk about our, when you tell our story, you've got to talk about the Palladians because that's where we came from. Exactly, exactly. Hmm. Now you've also been a big proponent of uh, mass meditations, fire, fire the grid, and, and other such things. Um, I'm interested in this because I've started a project of my own called the Collective Imagination. And we have big goals of, of trying to reach 3% of the population to come together to consciously create. Um, how, how, just how important and how powerful is the collective imagination? Well, actually, those uh, collective meditations, mass meditations, can change the situation dramatically. If the critical mass of people gather at the same time, and they focus their consciousness in the same way, this is a very powerful stream of energy that can change the course of the events. And actually, the offer for the, of the surrender, uh, offer for the surrender of the Kabbalah that was uh, put forth, uh, it was put forth uh, exactly, let's say, a few hours after the Venus transit meditation, return of the goddess meditation. So this is the power our collective consciousness has. And I have just put out a call for a regular weekly meditations every Sunday uh, that would continue until the planet is liberated. And I would like the more and more people joining those meditations because when you reach a certain critical mass, um, this can initialize the breakthrough. Uh, because the unified uh, consciousness field influences everybody, including the people in the military, including the cabal, including everybody. And... There were scientific studies made in, uh, exactly in Washington, D.C., that uh, the mass meditations have decreased the crime rate in a few weeks by 25%. This is just a few weeks of meditating. So if we continue doing this every Sunday, uh, regardless of everything else, there will be a certain moment, I can guarantee you that, that the breakthrough will be made and the humanity will be liberated. We just make enough people doing this every Sunday regularly. And... Uh, uh, this will for sure uh, reach a certain critical mass, and when this critical mass is reached, the breakthrough will happen. Actually, by doing those meditations, we can speed up the process. Uh, I think everybody is tired of all those delays, including me, and including other people working on this, mm. and we would like this to happen as soon as possible. 
And if people do those meditations, they will speed up the process. Wonderful. Um, in your own words, what is ascension? Ascension is a liberation of human consciousness from all um, the limitations of the physical world of the emotions of the mind. So it's going beyond all that. It's a process of complete and total enlightenment of human consciousness and actually entering the sphere or dimension of enlightenment of pure light. Is another, could there be another way of saying it is in uh, mastering the third dimension in the sense of uh, gaining as much control in the third dimension as we do in the fourth or fifth? You know, when people have a have a 4D experience or even a 5D experience. They can walk through walls, they can fly, they can, you know, do things. Uh, If you were to to term that having mastered those dimensions, are we in a process of mastering the third? Okay, uh, after your ascension, you uh, get complete command over your mind body, and that includes the possibility of manifesting in the third dimension. You can materialize or she would say project your light body. You can create a light body projection in the third dimension so that other people can see your body. This is what you can do after your ascension. But after your ascension, you have no need to control or to influence the physical plane in the old way. You are beyond that. The only motivation why you would like to manifest or materialize your body is simply to help others reach the same state and to have them liberate. So this ascension process and getting to that point is something that we're looking at achieving in the next two years? Mm, I would not say so. Uh, this year is the start of this process, and I have been received instructions from the Pleiadians not to speak in detail about this before the Kabbalah is removed. Okay. And one of the reasons for this is because the Kabbalah is also listening, and they're uh, creating counter plan that... Uh, actually um, hinder the ascension process until they are still in power. So I will not speak about details um, before the cabal is removed. But yes, there is a certain process being prepared for, for, um, for this planet, and that includes ascension for some beings. And what about and the others? It will take a certain period of time, but I will not go into details right here. If it's for just some beings, what happens to the others? Um, not everybody will experience ascension in this lifetime because it's such a big step of consciousness. Most of regular humanity will just experience deprogramming. It means removal of the programs that they have accepted uh, in their uh, in their in their in, in their selves uh, by being exposed to the cabal. So this is going to be removed, and they will be free to choose their own destiny afterwards. But we are talking in my lifetime. <laughs> I will not give any time frame right now. Okay. Not yet. Was there anything else that you want to, to specifically say? Is there anything that you've, um, any news that you have that you haven't released as yet that you can? Um, there are a few things I would like to say. The first one is that um, we are now in the final phase of this epic battle between light and dark. And I would say that to everybody, just keep focusing upon the light, uh, keep doing the meditations, keep connecting with the source. This is very important uh, for the smooth transition, because what you want to manifest is a smooth transition. So uh, regardless of all the dates and all the timelines, the process is happening, and it will continue until the final breakthrough. And after the final break, there will be a big celebration all over the world because people will finally be free. And let's keep that vision and make it a reality. Yeah, that's a vision we can hold, for sure. Okay, very good. Your site is obviously getting a lot of attention. People are very aware of you. Um, Yes, yes, I realize that. Yeah. Um, And all the information coming out of there is very good and very positive. So thank you for that. Okay, actually, I was asked by the resistance movement to put up this block to inform the population, and I had some doubts at the beginning, but they said it's time now, it's time to go for it, and I did. So, obviously, this has some effects. Is there more that we can be doing, though, on the ground? I mean, apart from participating in meditations and connection, is there more action that we could be taking? Oh, yes, there are many things you can do. 
The first one is to spread the information. Um, this is step number one. Mm, step number two is uh, this is also possible to put some pressure on the mass media to start reporting things. You see, uh, this pressure is actually something that life can do to bombard the mass media with letters, with calls, with emails about starting, uh, about start to report the truth. And also you can mm, bombard the government about the situation and ask questions and investigate. And this is what many people are doing, and this is exactly why we have this progress. So if somebody would like to have more action, they can initialize more action their own way. Because everybody has that inner guidance, and if you're going to do something, do it. So I would say the key here is action. This is not about uh, just watching the show. It's about actually participating in it and uh, making history, making, creating our, our destiny. Definitely. Definitely. So how, how effective are the protests, though, things like the Occupy movement? Uh, it is not, uh, you see, the real effect of those protests is for the mass population to become aware of the situation. Mm. They have not achieved much uh, in terms of the government changing things, but they have achieved much in average person being aware of the 99% and 1%. So that's Absolutely. A, it's, it's a big achievement. So if you meet anybody on their streets, they will know about it. They will know that there is a small group of central banker, bankers doing nasty things. Uh, one or two years ago, this was not so. So this is a big achievement. And this makes our plan so much easier, because when the time comes for the breakthrough for, for the event, when things will be in the mass media, people will know and they will understand. And most of them, they will agree. So yes, when I, first so learned about, when I first learned about the, how the banking system really works a few years ago, there was no one to talk to about it. You had to go online to to do your own research and, and, and learn about these things. But now it seems everybody understands the fiat currency, fiat currency system and how it works and who operates it and who owns it. And, you know, the Occupy movement pretty much single-handedly did that. Exactly, exactly. So you don't always um, achieve the objective you have, but you achieve something else. And this is how that works. You put out something, you do something, and then... There is a certain consequence to this, and it might not be exactly what you planned, but you achieve something else, and so the light builds, and at a certain point, there will be a breakthrough. I know, I know you said earlier that, um, that the, the you know, humanity is being held hostage, essentially, which is what has stalled action. Yes. But is there, is there also a great deal of concern about how humanity is going to react? Well, um, one of the main concerns of the life forces is actually, actually the reaction of the masses to more definite action. Because some people will like it and some people will not like it, and we have to deal with that. Mm. So actually the hostages have been programmed to the point where many of them don't want to be liberated. And that is a quite a complicated problem, and we're trying to resolve this right now. Yes, it's like the victim being falling in love with the perpetrator. When it, yes, yes. Mm, so Stockholm syndrome, Stockholm syndrome. That's it, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On mass. Yes. Yeah, it's a shame. Okay, thank you again very, very much. You're welcome. It was a pleasure for me to be part of this. And it was lovely to speak with you. And uh, good luck with everything you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye for now. Thank you, White Knights is supported by ExclusiveWellnessClub.com, home of wellness products for the health conscious such as MMS1 and 2, Lugol's Iodine, DMSO, Colloidal Silver and MSM at ExclusiveWellnessClub.com, shipping outside the United States available, link below. This is Thank You White Knights and I hope you enjoyed this video. For updates and to go to the source of this article please find the link below the YouTube screen while watching in YouTube. For the latest news and updates please visit thankyouwhitenights.com.